Good evening. In the absence of the President of Council, I hereby call to order the January 18 meeting of Troy City Council. I ask that all cell phones be placed on silent. We will now have a roll call. Mr. Twiss. Here. Mr. Siebert. Present. Mr. Roselle. Here. Mr. Schilling. Present. Mr. Pierce. Here. Mrs. Snead. Here. Mr. Whitten. Here. Mrs. Marshall. Here. Mr. Phillips. May we please excuse Mr. Phillips? Second. Moved. So moved. Moved. So moved. 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 And seconded. Second. Anyways. Okay, so it was moved by Mr. Roselle and seconded by Mrs. Snee. I will call the roll. Mr. Sievert. Yes. Mr. Roselle. Yes. Mr. Schilling. Yes. Mr. Pierce. Yes. Mrs. Snee. Yes. Mr. Whitten. Yes. Mrs. Marshall. Yes. Mr. Twist. Yes. Okay. He is excused. So now we will need to have an election of a temporary president of council pro tem to preside at this meeting. I would nominate uh, Mr. Sievert. Second. Please. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, well, it didn't go as planned. <laughs> okay. There'll be a roll call for that. This is true. Mr. Roselle. Yes. Mr. Schilling. Yes. Mr. Pierce. Yes. Mrs. Snee. Yes. Mr. Whitten. Yes. Mrs. Marshall. Yes. Mr. Twist. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sievert. Yes. Okay. Mr. Sievert is elected temporary president pro tem of council to preside at this meeting. I will turn the meeting over to him. Do we have a coronation or something? Or I really have to go to this chair. Pomp and circumstances, he comes to the chair. <laughs> Full of entertaining tonight. Two minutes in. Thank you for that vote of confidence. I will now call on Mrs. Marshall for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, we ask that you preside over this meeting, and although we may have different opinions, allow us to listen to one another graciously and work together for a great outcome. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I believe next on the agenda will be uh, Mayor Oda to do the presentation of the fourth quarter 2021 Look Who's Recycling Award winner. Mayor Oda. Jill Rhodes, our city engineer, is going to assist. I'll go out and So tonight, uh, Look Who's Recycling recipient is Roberta Jacobs. She lives in our Westbrook area, and one of the reasons that we uh, chose her was her response to recycling. She said it's one of the easiest things that we can do that makes the positive impact in our environment and communities. So I just want to say thank you. Oh, thank you. And we have a little gift for you to congratulate you. And thank you for the opportunity that we can recycle. Yeah. Thank you. I think there's some pictures. <laughs> As the mayor returns to her seat, uh, I believe the next item on the agenda is a public hearing uh, regarding 02 2022, a rezoning of 2.484 uh, acre parcel. I'll turn it over to uh, Do I turn it over to you, Sue, or just declare the meeting open? Do um, you wish me to read the title? Sure. Ordinance number 02 2022, an ordinance changing the zoning of parcel number D08099763. In lot 7392 in the city of Troy, Ohio, from R2 Light Industrial District to B1 Local Retail District. Okay. At this time, I would ask anyone uh, supporting the rezoning to come forth and uh, state your name and make any comments they wish to make regarding this rezoning. Anyone in support wish to come forward? Anyone not supporting the rezoning to come to the podium and make state your name and uh, make comments as well? 
Seeing none, I will uh, close said meeting. Uh, I will now ask the clerk to read a summary of the minutes of the January 3rd meeting. Minutes of Council, January 3, 2022. Ordinance number 01, 2022, employing clerk, was given first reading and was adopted. Election of President of Council Pro Tem, Mr. Phillips was elected. Election of Clerk of Council Pro Tem, Mrs. Snee was elected. The rules of council were approved. Committee reports personnel committee recommended the appointment of Kenneth Block to the Human Relations Commission and that was approved. Resolution number R1, 2022, authorizing sale of property using internet services during 2022 was given first reading and adopted. Ordinance number 072, 2021, subdivision regulations was given second reading, failed suspension of rules. Ordinance number 02, 2022, a rezoning was given first title reading. Fall, uh, Mr. Lutz, President of Council, did announce the committee assignments for the two years and then Council adjourned at 7.30 p.m. following uh, comments. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes from Council? Move to adopt. Second. Schills. Mr. Schilling moved. Mr. Roself seconded. Please call the roll. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whidden? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Minutes are approved. At this time, we will turn uh, the meeting over to committee reports. Uh, we have several tonight. Uh, the first uh, committee report will be buildings and utilities. Mrs. Marshall is the chairwoman. Okay, on January 10th, this committee met regarding bidding authorization for the chemical polyphosphate for the water plant. The chemical is used on the air stripper. Changes in governmental regulations and increased demand for the chemical have resulted in a price increase that will require bidding the chemical. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for polyphosphate for the water plant at a cost not to exceed $100,000. Respectfully submitted by uh, Mr. Twiss, Mr. Whitten, and myself as Chair. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the Community and Partnerships Committee, Mr. Roselle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On January 10th, committee member Siebert and Rizal met to consider authorizing an application for $493,000 to the Ohio Department of Development Office of Community Development for Community Development Block Grant Target Opportunity COVID-19 Response Funds for renovations to the Buckeye House located at 411 413 South Market Street. The renovations would assist the Buckeye House in providing improved safety for shelter shelter residents by complying with public health recommendations surrounding COVID and congregate settings. The city is required to make an application for the funds on behalf of the owner. The committee recommends that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to submit and execute documents of $493,000 to CDBG Target of Opportunity COVID-19 Response Program funding and if the application is approved to administer the grant for the certified <coughs> renovation of the Buckeye House. The committee further supports emergency legislation so the application can be submitted without delay and upon application approval, the Buckeye House renovations proceed for the benefit of the clients served by the Buckeye House. This is respectfully submitted by Jeff Schilling, Todd Sievert, and myself as chair. Thank you. Is that the only report from the community and partnerships? Yes, sir. Moving on then to finance. Uh, I've asked Mr. Roselle, there should be four reports from four reports from finance, and I would ask Mr. Roselle to read those. On January 10th, the committee met to consider to consider the recommendation of a loan of the loan review committee that a new loan of $141,000 be approved for the small business development SBC revolving loan fund to Allen Financial Group LLC to assist with improvements at 80 to 80 South Plum Street as discussed in the detailed report. 
The committee supports the recommendation of the Loan Review Committee of supporting this loan application as meeting the intent of the Small Business Development Revolving Loan Program and recommends that legislation be prepared approving for the loan application to Allen Financial Group, LLC, for $141,000 for improvements to 80 South Plum Street with the terms recommended by the Loan Review Committee. This committee further supports emergency legislation so that the loan can be processed without delay and the project continue. Respectfully submitted, Bobby Phillips, myself, and Todd Sievert as chair. On, on January 10th, the committee also met to consider a recommendation of the Loan Review Committee to extend loan term for the Small Business Development <clears throat> Revolving Loan Fund to 107 West Main Street, LLC, to assist the owners, Sam O'Neill and Doug Ernst, with improvements to the second floor of the Masonic Temple Building at 107 West Main Street. Improvements to the first floor have resulted in the space being leased and the owners are, are now in position to renovate the, the second floor earlier than anticipated. This committee supports the recommendation of the Loan Review Committee of approving this revised loan application and is meeting the intent of the Small Business Development Revolving Loan Program and recommends that legislation be prepared to amend the repayment terms of the 2021 loan to 107 West Main Street, LLC, from three years to 20 years. Committee further supports emergency legislation so the loan can be processed without delay and renovation work continue on the upper floors of 107 West Main Street. This is respectfully submitted by Bobby Phillips, myself, and Todd Sievert as chair. Number three, uh, this committee met to consider the recommendation of the Loan Review Committee that a new community development block grant CDBG Fund Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund loan of $300,000 to approve for Speedy Speakeasy Raymond LLC for the purchase of equipment for a new restaurant to be located at 101 West Main Street as discussed in the detailed report. This committee supports the recommendation of the Loan Review Committee of approving the loan application as meeting the intent of the CDBG Economic Development Revolving Loan Program and recommends the legislation be prepared approving the loan application in the amount of $300,000 to Speakeasy Ramen LLC for the purchase of equipment for a new restaurant at 101 West Main Street based on the terms recommended by the Loan Review Committee. This committee further supports emergency legislation so that the loan can be processed without delay and equipment purchased. Respectfully submitted by Bobby Phillips, myself, and Todd Sievert as chair. And finally, on January 10th, the committee met to consider the lease of a mor release of a mortgage lien no longer needed to as collateral on a 2004 loan to the Pinnacle Banquet and Catering Center as the loan has been <clears throat> repaid in full. This committee recommends that the legislation be prepared, authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety and the Director of Law to take action as necessary to complete the release of the mortgage lien on the property <coughs> of Deborah L. Newsom. The, this committee further supports emergency legislation so that the mortgage lien can be released without delay. Respectfully submitted, Bobby Phillips, William Rozelle, and Todd Siever. Thank you, Mr. Rozelle, for those reports. Uh, streets and sidewalk, I believe Mrs. Snee will be giving that report. Yes, thank you. On January 10th, this committee met to consider recommending the resolution of necessity for Phase 14 of the Sidewalk Replacement Program. Phase 14 includes approximately 134 parcels where replacements or repairs have been identified. These property owners would be given until April 15th, 2022 to obtain a permit for the work. Thereafter, the repairs would be made by the city. It is the recommendation of this committee that the resolution of necessity be prepared for Phase 14 of the Sidewalk Replacement Program. This is respectfully submitted by Mr. Pierce, myself, and Mr. Phillips as chair. Thank you, Mrs. Snee. I believe that concludes. Have, excuse me, Mr. Seaver, we have two more. Two more. Oh, items. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> On January 10th, this committee met to consider recommending the resolution of necessity related to the installation of sidewalks and a shared use path within the South Stanfield Road Reconstruction Project Phase 1. This will then allow for notification to the property owners regarding the estimated assessments. 
It is the recommendation of this committee that the resolution of necessity be prepared related to the sidewalk shared use path portion of the South Stanfield Road reconstruction project phase one. The committee supports emergency legislation so that the notification to the property owners can commence without delay so that the project stays on the required schedule related to the OPWC funding. And this is respectfully submitted by Mr. Pierce, myself, and Mr. Phillips as chair. And finally, on January 10th, this committee met regarding bidding authorization for the West Main Street Corridor Improvements Projects Phase 1 at a total cost not to exceed $7,700,000. The detailed report outlines the project history, scope, and funding. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the West Main Street Corridor Improvements Project Phase 1 at a cost not to exceed $7,700,000. Respectfully submitted by Mr. Pierce, myself, and Mr. Phillips as chair. Thank you, Thanks. Mrs. Snee. Uh, we will now turn the floor over to uh, citizens' comments for any matters that are on the agenda tonight or any response to the committee reports that were read into the record today. Uh, if you wish to address these issues, please come forward, state your name and address, and you will have two minutes uh, to speak on these issues. Mr. Kerber will serve as our timekeeper. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Mickey Hammer, um, 1160 Red Maple Drive. And um, just the uh, first thing I want to say is I appreciate everything that all of you do. Um, Troy is an amazing city, and I love living here, and um, I just want to get that out first. Um, what, what I would like to talk about real quick is, is a topic that's going to be discussed later today, and it's going to be a done deal. But I, I think it's important for um, all the council to hear what I've heard uh, relative to this topic, and it has to do with the proposed revision, I wrote it down so I wouldn't mess it up. Uh, proposed revision subdivision regulations section 1101.01e. And it has to do with the morals uh, wording in that um, proposal. And as uh, I am the uh, HOA president for Stonebridge Meadows, and um, upon, upon hearing about this change that could possibly be made or wasn't going to be made, I reached out to my fellow board members and asked what their thoughts were based on the information that I had. And it just seems to be that um, we're, we're, we're treading on, on kind of slippery slope here when we start trying to impose moral judgments on people who uh, are doing things within their homes or their subdivisions or whatever. The way I look at it is that if it's already immoral, why isn't there already a law against it? And just impose the law, right? I, I don't think, and based on input from the uh, other council member or um, board members from our subdivision, our HOA, they kind of feel the same way that it seems to be like a little bit of an overreach. And so I know it's going to be voted on today, it's going to go through, and everything's going to be fine, but just count, uh, asking for council to be cognizant okay. of what your decisions are doing. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank Again, you. Again, love, love, love you guys, what you're doing. It's all great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you for your comments. Anybody else wish to address anything on the agenda or through committee reports today? Seeing none, we will move on to resolutions. I would ask the clerk to read resolution R2-2022. Resolution number R2-2022. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for polyphosphate for the water plant. Cost not to exceed $100,000, first reading. Are there any questions or comments from council regarding this? Move to suspend. Second. That's the clerk to call the roll, please. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. 
Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Mrs. Marshall? Sorry. Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. I, 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 Uh, clerk, could you call over? I have that as um, motion by Mr. Roselle and second by Mr. Correct. Whitten. Okay. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Weirden? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Resolution is adopted. We will move forward then to R3-2022, if the clerk could read that. Resolution number R3-2022, resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio, to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the West Main Street Improvement Project Phase 1, cost to not to exceed $7,700,000, first reading. How does can Council wish to proceed? Move to suspend. Second. Second. Move to suspend by Mr. Schilling, seconded by Mr. Twist. Could you call the roll, please? Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mrs. Schill Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Uh, there was a motion to adopt by Mr. Roselle, seconded by Ms. Snee. Could you call the roll, please? Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Moving on then to R4 2022. Could the clerk call the Resolution number R4 2022. Resolution declaring the necessity of phase 14 of the sidewalk replacement program in the city of Troy, Ohio. Uh, this is the uh, first reading. This will now allow us to provide notice to the abutting property owners. First reading. Move to suspend. Second. There's been a motion to suspend by Mr. Schilling, seconded by Mrs. Snee. Could you call the roll, please? Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten. Yes. There's. Go ahead. Move to adopt. Second. <laughs> the uh, motion to adopt the resolution by Mr. Twist, seconded by Mr. Whitten. Call the roll, please. Mr. Twist. Yes. Mr. Sievert. Yes. Mr. Roselle. Yes. Mr. Schilling. Yes. Mr. Pierce. Yes. Mrs. Snee. Yes. Mr. Whitten. Yes. Mrs. Marshall. Yes. Resolution is adopted. Moving on, I believe we're at R5 2022. Yes. If the clerk could. Uh. Resolution declaring the necessity of new and replacement sidewalks, shared path, shared youth path, as part of the South Stanfield Road reconstruction project phase one in the city of Troy, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Uh, this will also permit the notification to abutting property owners. This is the first reading. Any questions or concerns about this legislation? Second. Motion to suspend by Mr. Whitten, seconded by Mr. Twiss. Could the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Second. There's been a motion to adopt uh, the legislation by Mr. Roselle, seconded by Mr. Twist. Could the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Moving on to R7 2022. Could the clerk read? R the same. Six. R6, I'm sorry, I pushed too quick. R6, 2022. Resolution number R6, 2022. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio to file an application 
with the State of Ohio, Ohio Department of Development, to participate in the Community Development Block Grant Target of Opportunity COVID-19 Response Fund Program and declaring an emergency. Uh, this is the first reading. This will apply for funds uh, to uh, use on rehab at the property at 411 413 South Market Street, known as the Buckeye House. First reading. Move to suspend. No. Okay. It's been moved by Mr. Roselle and seconded by Mr. Pierce um, to suspend the rules. Clerk, could you please call the rule? Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. It's been a motion to adopt by Mrs. Snee, seconded by Mr. Pierce to adopt the resolution. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twish? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Rozelle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Resolution is adopted. We'll move on to R7-2022. If the clerk could read the same, please. Resolution number R7-2022, resolution approving the application of Allen Financial Group, LLC for loan assistance from the Small Business Development Revolving Loan Fund and declaring an emergency. This is a loan in the amount of $141,000 to assist with improvements to 80 South Plum Street, recommended by the Loan Review Committee, first reading. Are there any questions or concerns? Mr. Temporary Pro Tempore Presidente, I have a clarification. Um, on the SPDs, which I always wanted to say publicly at a meeting, SPDs, loans and the CB, CDBG loans, we have the ability to recall those if their scope of work is not done, correct? So if they say we want the loan for equipment, they don't purchase equipment or do what they have said in the loan process, we, ha we have the ability to recall that loan, correct? Uh, yes, if we find that they're not doing the work that is in intended, then we do have language in the contract and the agreement that allows us to do that. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you, Mr. Twist. Any other questions or comments? How does council wish to proceed? Move to suspend. Second. Motion to suspend by Mr. Schilling, seconded by Mr. Roselle. You will call the roll, please. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Move to adopt. Yes. Second. A motion to adopt by Mr. Twist, seconded by Mr. Roselle. Please call the roll. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Resolution is adopted. We'll move on to R8-2022. If the clerk could read that, please. Resolution number R8-2022. Resolution approving the application of 107 West Main, LLC, for loan assistance from the Small Business Development Revolving Loan Fund and declaring an emergency. This is uh, for a loan. Uh, application associated with 107 West Main LLC property and this is the first reading as recommended by the Loan Review Committee. Any questions or concerns from Council? Move to suspend. There was a motion to suspend by Mr. Whitten, who I Second. now recognize, and seconded by Mr. Twist. Please call the roll. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. There is a motion to adopt by, <coughs> excuse me, by Mrs. Snee, a second by Mr. Whitten. Could you please call the roll? Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. 
Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Wooden? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Moving on, could you uh, please read R9-2022, which I believe is the last of our resolutions. Yes. Resolution number R9-2022, resolution approving the application of Speakeasy Raymond LLC for loan assistance from the CDBG Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund and declaring an emergency. This is a loan of $300,000. And this has been recommended for approval by the uh, Loan Review Committee first reading. Move to suspend. Second. There is a motion to suspend by Mr. Rozelle, seconded by Mr. Twiss. Could you please call the roll? Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Rozelle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. There's a motion to adopt by Mr. Twist, seconded by Mr. Whitten. If you'd please call the roll. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Resolution is adopted. We'll move on now to ordinances. The first ordinance. Uh, is 073 2021. Yes. If the clerk could please read that ordinance. Ordinance number 073 2021. An ordinance repealing Title III, Part 11, subdivision regulations of the codified ordinances of the City of Troy, Ohio, and enacting new Title III, Part 11, subdivision regulations of the codified ordinances of the City of Troy, Ohio. This is as recommended by the Troy Planning Commission. This is the third reading. Any questions or concerns or comments on this? Yeah, I, Grant, can you give your, uh, we've had a lot of talk about taking the moral sentence out, not out. Can you give the example or clarify why it's there or why it, it's felt to be needed in there and has been in there for <coughs> the length of time that it has? Well, it, it has been in there for a long time. It, uh, <clears throat> that section, uh, uh, it's my understanding it was not changed at all when these were by subdivisions, so this is just adopting the same language as in the prior ones. Um, and it really, it comes from the uh, Ohio Revised Code. It's just stating uh, the proper purposes for um, subdivision regulations. Now, I think everybody's had an opportunity to look at the, the, the subdivision regulations. There's a lot there, but as you can see, they are... Uh, the regulations uh, in, involve uh, a, a lot of technical things, such as storm water runoff, the retention, the process that you use to get a subdiv uh, subdivision approved, uh, the construction uh, standards uh, in that regard, and all of those things are objective. And I, I think uh, uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, it's it's more about development and and, and the proper planning for it. Um, with some legislation, uh, if there are legal challenges, courts will examine uh, whether or not the legislation is um, uh, enacted for a proper purpose. So uh, at the beginning of this legislation, and as it had been in the past, it lists, um, I, and I, I, don't, I don't know, there's probably 15 different reasons uh, that the legislation uh, is, is City Council is saying why these subdivision regulations are, 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 are part of that. The more reasons that you have out, uh, out there we could give if, if, if the regulations are challenged, it, it does give a court more, uh, it, it, to, to quote somebody that uh, I've known pretty well, more tools in the toolbox uh, as far as you can point to uh, this is a proper purpose uh, for uh, these regulations to be in effect. So, uh, you know, the, the more acceptable regulate or uh, rationale that you set forth, uh, it just makes it less subject to any sort of um, uh, legal challenge. Thank you. Any other comments? Or this will be the third reading, so I don't believe we need to suspend the rules. How does count? Adopt. Second. There's been a motion to adopt by Mr. Twist, seconded by Miss Snee. Could you call the roll, please? Mr. Schilling? 
Yes. Mr. Pierce? No. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whidden? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Rozell? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Moving on, we will go to Ordinance 02-2022. I'd ask the clerk to read the same. Ordinance number 02-2022. An ordinance changing the zoning of parcel number D08099763 in lot 7392 in the city of Troy, Ohio from M2 Light Industrial District to B1 Local Retail District. This has been recommended for approval by the Troy Planning Commission and this would be the second reading and this will be a subject of a committee at the next committee session. So we need to go, we had the public hearing tonight so we'll refer to committee. Yes. So that will go to a third reading. I would ask the clerk then to read ordinance 03-2022. <coughs> ordinance number 03-2022. Ordinance releasing mortgage lien for Deborah L. Newsom and declaring an emergency. Uh, the mortgage is being released as the loan has been paid in full. This is the first reading. Any questions or concerns from council? Move to suspend. Second. Second. There is a move to suspend by Mr. Rosell, seconded by Mr. Schilling. I would ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Whidden? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Rosell? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Dock? Second. There's been a motion to adopt by Mr. Twist, seconded by Mr. Roselle. Could you please call the roll, clerk? Mr. Whidden? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Uh, at this time, that concludes the legislative portion of our uh, meeting. I will ask Ms. Knight, are there any communications or announcements? No, sir. Uh, hearing none, I will turn the uh, dais over to Shane Carter to give us a presentation today on the Lincoln Community Center. Uh, so Shane, if you want to come forward, we appreciate it. Good evening, everybody. I brought uh, some handouts. Is it okay if I pass them out and you guys can look at them while we go? last September was 10 years in my role as the executive director of Lincoln Center, so um, it's been a, a great ride, a lot of fun, um, very much so encouraged by uh, some of the things we've been able to be ac accomplish as well as a lot of the success stories that come out of our building every day, so it's, um, it's a tiresome job, but it's definitely very rewarding, so just grateful to be here today and, and present to you guys. Um, some of the important things I'm going to talk about um, really is kind of give a brief overview of how we got to where we are today. Um, without the city, when we started in 1938, and it was a WPA and a city bond issue. It actually built the Lincoln Center as far as us being incorporated. But we date back to 1865 as a room schoolhouse and uh, named after Abe Lincoln um, with mainly uh, a focus on education, which it still is today. So we're very proud of what um, our education uh, does for young people and adults. But our roots run back to being a one-room schoolhouse um, in which collaboration with the city of Troy um, Troy schools and the Board of Education have very been paramount to our success. So. Very, very thankful for that. Um, also, as far as to speak on our history a little bit, uh, prior to being a community center, the new one in the schoolhouse, um, the Lincoln Center obviously was one of the only places for African Americans and that here in America was segregated. So we're very grateful that we're beyond that today, not only in the city of Troy, but throughout the country, and that we can walk with all walks of life and people from 
um, kind of some of the research I've done here, we're actually servicing people as far north as kind of Lushi and moving up close to Lima, a uh, group of women that come down every day to swim. And we also have folks as far uh, east as Springfield over into, you know, the areas of New Carlisle, uh, as far south as Dayton, as far west as even, you know, Greenville and places like that. So just to know that we've really became, um, from the neighborhood and community center to really like what I call a, a regional center that really takes some folks from a, a lot of different areas. So we're very proud of that. Um, one of the most important things you know, I want to talk about today is just being able to encourage not only um, your city, city staff, folks who are listed here, um, to utilize the Lincoln Center. Um, one of our goals internally, we currently have about 400 members, and we've kept our members, uh, membership to $10 a month. And what you get with that is, is 40,000 square feet of uh, not only a pool, gymnasium, uh, computer lab, Wi-Fi, art studio, uh, all the amenities you have in a first-class recreation center, um, but then also some of the programs in terms of yoga and Zumba and the ability for young people to play basketball and have tutors um, and, and all the things that go with trying to continue to raise the bar of having good programming. So I would encourage all you guys, it's not something limited to the city of Troy. Um, if your time allows, come down, get a tour, um, you know, get, get a membership, your wife, your, cho your children, everybody are 21 and younger is free. I think that's pretty awesome. Our board committed to that. Um, and that was obviously a very important business decision um, because at the end of the day, um, I have a friend who actually runs a boys and girls club in Toledo, on the east side of Toledo, and they have to charge their, their kids $5 a month. And naturally there's memberships and there's, a, there's an unrestricted fund they have to help with that. But that's something that obviously discourages and deters really some of the people that could utilize our services. So I really um, am proud of our board of directors, not only in understanding um, our roots, but ultimately how we provide programming in a constituent group that is able to access our programming. So um, $10 a month um, as an adult, and we're running a membership drive right now. Um, to the end of the month, $100 for the year. So if you're interested in coming down, utilize the pool, even though you're coming down sometimes to you know, work out just in the winter, I'd encourage you to even pay your annual membership. It's 100, 100 bucks. Um, and then it also allows for, as we provide scholarships for maybe even adults that say, hey, I can't pay that 100 bucks. Uh, kids that, you know, around school time need things, it allows us to offset that and be able to use those funds for things that we can do. Uh, moving forward, um, some of the things I'm really, really excited about for this year. Um, is we've got a, a partnership with, continued partnership with a lot of folks, but one with Vibe Fitness in which they're offering um, exercise classes, not only trampoline classes, um, spin classes, Zumba classes, um, and they start as early as 5.15 a.m. So if you guys are up at 5 a.m. and you want to work out, Bill, come on down. Um, they start about 5.15 5, 5 a.m. Um, and it's something that's really brought in a different group um, in terms of uh, demographics to our center. Um, and it also puts great pressure on our staff to have a clean building that's safe by 5 in the morning um, and to be able to do that with snow on the ground. And, you know, a night like tonight, we've got 480 kids in a basketball league. Um, and, you know, they turn around and get done at 10 o'clock and then at 5 a.m. ready to have the building ready. So we're very proud to be able to work with that partnership. Um, our continued partnership with UVMC and Premier Health um, is something that, you know, here as we work through the backside, hopefully this pandemic offering the, the screening and not only the glucose readings, but all the things they do throughout our center throughout the year is something that's very important to us. Um, and something that uh, we're also very proud of is a recent partnership with Dayton Children's, which will be on site at the Lincoln Center. And I'll be able to talk to you guys more about that as we move forward in that partnership. So this year is definitely one um, I would say that we're very excited about. Uh, naturally, not only with the new facility, with the new programming, I think it's really uh, raised the bar of our staff. Um, I will have to uh, brag on our board and staff. Over the last year, um, you know, we met in March 23rd uh, of 2020, and we made a decision to build this building. And, you know, obviously at that time, uh, construction prices were, were rising. Um, things within the country as far as, you know, with the pandemic were definitely difficult. And I watched our board and staff really come together uh, from March, you know, into today over the last two years. And not only complete the construction project, but really change the daily um, operations and expectations of our community center. And it's really been something I've been proud to watch because um, I'm very proud because, quite frankly, I'm not as important as I had to be to the organization anymore. And I know that beyond my tenure, it will be a successful organization. Um, and they know how to run the place. They know what customer service is like. They know how to handle each situation differently. They know how to provide first-class services. Um, and they do that under the umbrella of, you know, kind of no child at all has ever, you know, told no or left behind to get to our programming. So that requires a lot of logistics, a lot of transportation with the schools, um, a lot of understanding from our neighbors. You know, like a night like tonight, there's nowhere to park until you get to McCagg or you can park at La Fiesta. And that will go on for the next 12 weeks for every single night except Friday night. Um, that's something that, you know, 
I think you guys should be proud of them that you know, you're getting that type of programming and foot traffic at a community center right here, uh, centrally located in downtown Troy. So we're excited about that, that for the, the, the year. Um, one of the most critical things for me, um, I'll reiterate here and I'll try and get done here, is that um, trying to grow a membership base, that's important to us. It's not something that we budget for. It's something that we want to be able to grow that so people are a part of the center and can share with their friends and colleagues and their church members and what the good things are we're doing. Um, continuing to communicate well, and I work, Patrick and I work together each month on kind of what's going on at the center, but communicate with you guys what we have going on, getting those things too soon to uh, the city folks. You guys know what events are coming up. Um, you can look at your calendars, mark your calendars, because the biggest thing is, you know, you guys supporting the Lincoln Center shows the rest of the community how important it is to us. And that's something I would ask, I would encourage all of you guys to do because um, it's a very critical, that, that place is important to so many people. And as you guys show that, it also will grow the um, cohesiveness of our community. Um, another thing I would suggest <clears throat> is as we continue um, some of our programming throughout the rest of the year, um, naturally, you know, we have, the, we have the space now. So if you guys have uh, meetings going on and maybe you need extra space to come down for something you're planning for, uh, maybe there's an opportunity, you guys are doing something with your church or Girl Scout group, we have plenty of space we want to offer to nonprofits at no cost. Um, being back from school for 10 years, one of the things I always heard from nonprofits was there's not enough meeting space and we have plenty of space. Um, so make sure you reach out to us. Jordan Anderson handles that for us. And I'd say, took a, take a look at the programs that I gave you guys. Um, as I told Karen Boone, our board president, who's here, who's done a great job of leading us over the last uh, few years, I never take a look at everything we do until a day like today. So last night at midnight, I kind of sat down and remember I had to come here. I look at everything we do, and I'm just very amazed by what the staff is able to put out um, and, and at the programming we offer um, at an affordable rate. So. Um, coming up here, you'll have, we'll have a next our Black History Month kickoff, which will be February 1st. I'll have that press release out uh, this upcoming Friday. I'll share that with Sue. If you guys are free, please come down for those events. Um, and then kind of, and what I want to close in is kind of give you guys an idea, um, if you have any questions, obviously, um, of what a day at the Lincoln Center is like now. So, you know, like we talked about, we open up at 5 in the morning. We have individual trainer, um, who we're aware who trains folks and does a great job with that. And then we have um, our vibe classes that start at 515. Then we get into water aerobics and pickleball. Um, the seniors, they own the building from 8 to 11, they think. So we have to obviously you know, work with them and that they, well, their parking spots, how things are supposed to be. But they put a great amount of um, pressure on our staff to do things well and right because they are critical. Um, and that's something that we've learned. But then when they go and they're great advocates at Tim Hortons or you know, at their church groups of what the Lincoln Center is doing, so that's a good thing. Um, we also have a great partnership with RTI and Capability, so in the afternoon you'll see a lot of the MRDD um, uh, folks using our space to be able to come in. And then we get into homeschooling, uh, gym classes. Um, Julio teaches a, a Miami County Educational Services, what's a gym class for them every day, Monday through Thursday. Um, a lot of work with our homeschoolers uh, throughout the afternoon with art programs and things. And then something new we're doing every day is we've got about 30 junior high kids that Marcus Couch is training in a small gym. And that's really been neat because one of the things that I always realize is K to sixth grade, we have a great new group of kids. Then they get to junior high, and it's and there's a lot of opportunities. The rec is awesome for them. There's things we get involved in sports. We kind of lost that group. So now it's nice to see them in there every day from three to four, you know, being able to see them. Some of my own nephews I never get to see because the center wasn't cool enough or whatever. So to see them back working out in the center is really nice. Um, and then we get into our after school program, in which we have 93 kids registered. Um, the majority of them show up every single day. Um, and we're really proud of that because being able to not only get them right when they're in kindergarten, but them see them through, um, hopefully to obviously graduate in high school is really important. But the building slows down and about 5.30 basketball starts. So I would say, generally speaking, right now from Monday through Thursday, the Lincoln Center is available um, as far as to, to train and work out from about 5 a.m. until 9 or 10 p.m. Check our website you know, for the updates. Um, Maggie Sinking is our social media. Uh, once again, I just want to tell you guys I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk with you folks. If you have any questions, now holler at me. Um, if not, shoot me an email. Come down for a tour if you haven't seen it. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys tonight. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Boone, I would like you to, to be recognized as well. She's, uh, I think, the most, uh, I guess, fascinating aspect, I guess, looking through your stuff, is in 10 years you've grown from four programs to 60 programs. Uh, and I know through your leadership on the board and through Shane and everyone. So uh, uh, you're an integral part of the fabric and culture of our community, and we're just very pleased to have both of you here tonight. Anyone else wish to say any comments? Mr. Twist? Yeah, I obviously am a big user with my kids at the Lincoln Center and really appreciate all you guys do there. 
I have a question for just the public. If they wanted to donate, is there certain programs that need more funding than others, or can they say, hey, I want these funds to go to recreation or education? Mm -hmm. how, how do they do that? Absolutely. And what's that look like, I guess? Just that's that's a good question. <laughs> I appreciate you bringing that up. You know, when the fundraiser's um, when the fundraise for a year and a half and ask the community to support the level of four and a half million dollars, sometimes it's hard to get back on that question. But long-term long sustainability, uh, Mr. Twist, is important to us. Um, and I would suggest that right now, and I would take it to my finance committee, but the biggest um, thing you can support for us would be, as we go into our scholarship fund here, we provide our scholarships for our young people, um, seniors that are getting ready to be, will be freshmen in college, and also the renewal opportunity. I think that, I know Karen believes in education, and we also believe in anything that's, you know, we're entrusted with to get it out and, get, you know, give it back. So our scholarship fund, I would suggest towards the Spencer building as we continue to upgrade the original facility. Um, we have a building fund. Um, that would be important because we're going to be more from that space, which would be like my old office area and kind of to the left when you walk in the original building. Um, that's really important to us. And then I would suggest uh, the next biggest and most critical thing for us, we'll be planning here. Um, as the outside comes together, we're working on like a, a paver memorial garden area. So there may be a way in which people want to do something in memory of a loved one or somebody that worked at the center or somebody you believed in. Um, I think that'll be something that we're excited about as we get into the spring. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, um, openly, my goal, one of my goals, and I have a bunch of them uh, before the Lord puts me somewhere else, is um, to be able to grow an, an in-house endowment for the center at the, at the level of at least a million dollars. Um, we're very fortunate that John Spencer uh, left in 1950 $50,000. That's now grown to about $2.1 million that the Troy Foundation holds. Um, and that money is great when it's time to do things that make the center a better place and improve you know, facilities and allow us to do some nice things in terms of um, you know, um, planning. But naturally, as we continue to work hard on sustainability, um, I think it's wise to have these buckets that allow for us to continue to um, be prepared on a very rainy day whenever nothing's working, the roof's falling off, and the boiler's leaking. You know, so if I answer your question, I think that the scholarship fund's important because that's our way of investing back in our future. Sustainability towards the original building is important and critical to us. Um, and then as you, you know, and I have a, we have forms that, um, the best way to do it, I would say, is Maggie Sink handles our donor relations. Her email is msink at lcctroy.org. She'll probably, she's probably listening. I probably said more than she wants me to, but um, I know she knows exactly and can explain to you kind of what those buckets would look like and what we want um, to be able to plan for as we go into next year. Okay. Thanks. And online you can give, um, so you can go online to our website and there's an opportunity on there to be able to donate. Um, so obviously we are a 501c3. Um, our treasurer would tell you that we've done a great job of uh, fundraising. We've done a great job of grant writing. But when the economy is not doing so well, you know, it's, it's difficult to be able to budget for that gap. Um, so we, we know, you know, our, our guaranteed funds, where they're going to come from, so we hope. And then we have, obviously, we hope and pray as people do well and investments do well that we're able to attract, you know, more funding through, through donors. Thank you. Thank you. Any yes. other comments? She's doing a great job. Thank you, guys. Glad thank to do you it. both for coming. Yes, we thank you. And, and, and Karen, I know she knows us. Uh, without her, we wouldn't be where we're at today. So our leadership is uh, critical to us, and our entire board has really been awesome. And they've, um, there's been some long, long days of getting to where we're at, and we're very grateful to be here. So I think Miss Knight has served on that board for a she, long period of time. Yeah. 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 Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. 1895, that. I think she was. 18 <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the teacher, right? I will disregard the last <laughs> comment, but uh, moving forward, uh, she, does I, she does turn in payroll, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, uh, Mayor, uh, we'll go to the comments. Uh, Mayor Oda, do you have any comments tonight? Uh, just to piggyback on, on Shane's uh, speech that we're just thrilled to have Lincoln Center here in Troy, and um, it's been exciting to watch the transformation. So, kudos to you guys. Thank you. Mr. Titterington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. A um, couple of uh, brief announcements. Uh, I know since this comes up every once in a while, I believe, Mr. Twist, you asked about this. Leaf pickup oh, yeah. is over for the season. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, we've well, gone through at least three rounds. So, uh, But, you know, if you... Uh, have the biodegradable bags. You can put your leaves, brush, whatever, and we will still pick it up uh, year-round. 
Um, the dye mill facility, the compost facility is closed, but uh, we will still pick it up as part of our uh, uh, normal routes. And when I say we, I mean our uh, very fine and able uh, <coughs> folks at the Public Works yeah. and the Street Department. Uh, we are still picking up Christmas trees as long as they're free. Uh, the real ones, not the fake ones. I guess we would pick up fake ones as well, but they'll go to the landfill. Uh, the real ones, as long as they're free of any of the ornaments, plastic, tinsel, whatever. Uh, and we will continue to pick those up through uh, January 31st. Uh, we had uh, an area of town that thought that maybe we had missed them. And we may have, but we still have a couple of weeks to catch up and we are doing that. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kerber? I have nothing to add this evening, thank you. Any city staff have anything they wish to add? Any members of council have anything they wish to add? Seeing none, I'd like to thank Ms. Knight for giving me this script. Uh, Mr. Lutz, I'm sure you're watching on TV and uh, this is not a Wally Pip moment. Uh, you will be back here tomorrow, or in, in two weeks. What? Public oh, oh, any public comments <laughs> for tonight? He'll definitely not be willing to. I don't see anybody. Anyone wish to address no, council? No. Okay, seeing none. Meeting is adjourned. If you don't.